What up, everybody? You're now tuned into Candid Conversations. I'm your host, Brandon Lampley. Back today with another live stream. Hey, I know. Hey, it's been it's been a minute. Hey, we've it's gone far too long. Hey, but just know that one of these mornings won't be very long. Y'all gonna look for me. <laughs> Y'all know the rest. I ain't, I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna clown today. I ain't gonna clown today, man. I ain't gonna clown today. Y'all know the rest. What's up, man? How you feeling? Hey, man, I'm feeling good, man. It's a good day to be above ground. Any day, any day above ground is a good day. You know what I'm saying? Any day above ground is a good day, man. Mm -hmm. Hey, just, just know, just know. Hey, you beating the people who stayed on the couch all day. Just know that. Just know that. Exactly. Exactly. That part. That's it, man. That is it. So today, man, we're going to talk about this love versus money. Mm. When you, I remember you first brought it up to me. You say, B, is it about love or is it about money? <laughs> and I say that, that that hit me. I say, because I, with me and you talk plenty of times, and you, right. most people who know me know how I feel already. Right, right. And I'm going to bust some uh, hopeless romantics bubbles today. Um, it's about money, man. It's about money. Now, is there love out there? Yes, of course, there's love out there um uh, will someone love you unconditionally yeah they will usually those are your children and your parents uh, <laughs> yeah it's it's a it's, it's conditional pretty much with with any relationship outside of your children and your parents because okay a woman says she could love you to death but you lose that job hey that that belt line get a little saggy you stop paying right. her attention right. um yeah things will change very very quickly Hey, same on the other side. Hey, she stopped. She stopped doing what she needs to do. You know that she ain't keeping herself up. She not. She don't. Oh, damn, man. When last time you cooked, babe? I'm tired of eating McDonald's and and all that stuff, babe. Like, what, what what's going on? What's up? So it's stipulations on it all, man. So, um, I got a few quotes here before we dive straight into it. Ooh. Um, one of one of my um one of the uh, it's a song by um. Is it was it Frank Ocean? Yeah, by uh, Frank Ocean, and um, I think it's a uh, check. He say these bees want Nike. They looking for a check. That's my anthem right there. That's what they looking for. Right. And uh, one of my one of my other favorites is uh the Dream. He has a whole album called Love Versus Money. If you've never heard the Dreams Love Versus Money, you need to listen to it. He pretty much chronicles his life. And his marriage to uh, Nivea and how it kind of all fell apart. And right. dude, it's it, I mean, it is R and B gold. And he refers to Little Wayne, who Nivea ended up getting with. He doesn't say him by name, but you know who he's talking about, right? You know. Right. And so in and um in Love versus Money, he said, "You give her money, she wants love. You give her love, she's back at money. She'll right. run from man to man, making plans to plans. No secrets." Y'all know who we talking about. That's what he said. Right, right, right. That, what I don't like about that is how it's so downplayed, man. You know, yeah. uh, T.D. Jake said it best about, he was talking about love and marriage. Mm -hmm. How uh, <laughs> there's, you know, marriage is no more, man. This is a business transaction, dude. I mean, and, you know, people get married for convenience. People yep. get married for tax deductions. It's pretty much a business transaction, man. It's you know that love's out the window. You know, I, I hear dudes and you know, just people say, you know, it takes a little bit more than, you know, love to pay the bills or whatever, but love's gotta be the foundation. And what T D Jakes is pretty much breaking down is that we've gotten away from the foundation. Yeah. We've gotten away from the foundation when things go wrong. So if the if the relationship is based off money. So when the money gone, now we got all the problems. It's it's yep. so sad. Me and my mom had plenty of conversation about this. B. It's so sad that the number one reason people go left and people go right is because of a dollar. So is it about love or is it about money? Bro, it's always about the money. <laughs> always. Unless you fuck. Now, you have to really... And it's like searching for a needle in a haystack. Find that one who gets, who gets it, who believes that that one she she's she's not 
that paper chasing type of chick. But yeah. it, she it, nowadays in 2021, it's like searching for a leader in a haystack. You know? Yeah. And everybody gonna say, oh, no, I'm not like that. I'm not like that. Let that money be gone. <laughs> <laughs> say y'all married. Now, if y'all doing y'all thing, y'all ain't married, you know, okay. But say y'all married. And that money coming to the and that money coming to play, <sighs> boy, you mm-hmm. can't get no. I mean, you you ain't worthy of getting no booty. You ain't. I mean, dude, it's just it's just um, broke boys don't deserve no. Mm, you know, I you know, I, I I can't speak on something that I have not experienced because I haven't been there. Yeah, I haven't been there. That money change, oh man, bro. I can't say it's I can't say it's fictitious. That thing real is day as long, man. <laughs> so I'm just saying, man. And, yeah. and I'm not saying that money isn't important. Money is very important, you know. Very and the more you if you got money, you you got a different set of problems opposed to people who don't. But it can causes it can cause problems, especially when you don't have it, man. In a yeah. marriage, oh, Man, I think I'm gonna go sideways real quick, bro. I'll let you take it, bro. <laughs> oh, real quick, man. It's it's gonna go real. Just look at the marriage statistics and look at the reasons why people file. You know, they'll say irreconcilable differences, but one of the main, main top reasons, communication is is huge. Communication breaks down any type of relationship, um, regardless of the nature of it. Um, but right. money is the other reason. The couples who I grew up around, um, whether it was my parents and, and their marriages, well, my mom's marriage or my dad's marriage right. or, you know, um, family members, uncles, aunts, whoever. Majority, any time that I did see them argue, it was based around money. It was based around money. Anytime you hear them brought up somebody get upset or something like that, a lot of times it was based around money. You know, and whether somebody spent uh wasn't spending money correctly or somebody wasn't looking for a job right. or, you know, I mean, it, it was always about money. And as a kid, you know, I didn't understand. I'm like, Yo, why are they arguing so much about money? You know, I'm a kid, so I didn't, didn't understand. But now as an adult, I'm like, yeah, I can see how I see why they had problems. I, I see clear as day now why they would have issues, you know, and that millennials you know millennials with us millennials we're we still we we still in that that feeling you know that's where that's where it feels before reels have come in that's what we're living in today where everybody's about their feelings we we the participation trophy award generation right you know everybody wants to be in their feelings and your tone and that's why they tone police now because you know they want people to feel a certain way you know but the gen zers mm-mm, they're numb they're numb man they're numb so the girl, the Gen Z girls, man, they like, yo, I seen, and I, I kid you not, it's a video clip um, of these, uh, they're in the UK, and young black boys, young black girls, they're all around like 18, 19, 20. And the, go- the girls are telling the boys, they're like, if you still living at your home with your mom, living off her at 18, 19, 20 years old, tell me, I can't be with you. I can't deal with that. My man has to have this and has to have that. Dude, these girls ain't even out of college look like, Sean. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. I said, but this is this is where we are. It's in the UK? And this is in the UK. It's going on in USA, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, man, I made a long post today. And it was... Uh, you could have got so many things out of the post I posted today, but it's a long post. But here's the case yeah. side. They say you got the money. To get the money, you got to work to get the money. Then now we're gonna be complaining about the time. Yes. <laughs> it, it, That's it. it. Man, it's a catch twenty two with that thing, man. If mm-hmm. you ain't got money, you got problems. If you if you get the money coming in, now you ain't got the time. Then it just trickles on and then it, it, it. Yeah. There's no satisfaction, man. It, no, it, it's not. It's, it's, it's no, it's no, it's, z- it's zero satisfaction, bro. Zero. Yeah. So. And, you know, all jokes have some truth in them. Oh, all yeah. jokes. All jokes have some truth in them. Right. So growing up, always seeing whether it was, you know, whether it was Skin of Max 
or adult movies or you know regular movies or tv shows you always have rich successful husband and housewife right. rich successful husband is never home housewife ends up dealing with the plumber the pool boy the gardener personal trainer right. I, it, it, I mean she she messes with everybody she messes with she messes with these dudes it's because he's not home and then what she when she gets found out what she cry oh well you're never home you never give me any attention and doing all of that and it's like well what is he supposed to do he has to work he's a highly successful man you have the lifestyle you have because he works works yeah so if you go to plant complaining about the time or com and but my thing about it is it's like okay um look at look at how you're living i'm able to do all these things you complain about i'm able to do these things because of working yeah so what am i supposed to do not work now if i don't work and i'm supposed to be the provider of breadwinner now we got another problem it's just yeah. a catch-22 man it's like there is you know um and me and male friends, my brother, I mean, we've talked about things in the past, man. It's like, you know, it's like I said, in the, like I said in my post today, you can cross your T's and dot your I's, man. There's, there's, sometimes it feels as if there's no satisfaction, no satisfying. You know, mm -hmm. there's, 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 there's this non-appreciation and constant complaints. Okay, yeah, you're doing this right, but you could be doing this. It's always gonna be something, it's, and it's always you. Mm -hmm. It's it's always gonna be us. Yeah, we are always the problem. Yes, <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, it it's it's always us. It's always us. But yeah, I heard um, a book of Alphaeronomy, Doctor B O A. I was listening to him the other day. He has a great podcast, and uh, he was saying that um, he said women will be the victor or the victim he said ain't there's no in between right. he said yeah she and the victim the victim uh part of it too is going to be your fault it's okay. going to be your fault yeah that's you know thing. absolutely because even if let's say she's dead wrong i'm talking about dead wrong she's going to justify by saying well a man well you cheated on your husband well, he didn't give me any attention. He wasn't doing this. He wasn't putting it down. He wasn't doing this. It's always him. It's always going to be him, regardless of the situation. It's always going to be him. When you can, when you have, when you meet a woman and she says, "You know what? I had a good man. I had a good man, and I did not do what I was supposed to do as a woman, and I messed it up." Uh, it, that right there, I, I've seen a few. It's a few videos of that, and. I see that. That's shocking to me. It, to me, it's shocking to hear you even say it. I'm like, who said that? Yeah. <laughs> Where you see that at? <laughs> it, it's a it's a it's a TikTok going around right now. Some young um young black girl. I think she's about thirty years old, and right. she said she had met she had met a guy in her in her she was twenty five, right. and she met a guy. He was in his early forties, and she said this man wanted to invest in me mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, financially. She said he pretty much you know, wanted to build a life with her. And she said that he boosted her self-esteem up so high that she felt like she could do better. So she said, fast forward to present day, she's a year removed from dealing with a narcissist. And now she understands that, you know, every man doesn't want to invest in you. Every man is not looking to build, you know, and that that's one of the, and that's one of the, um, one of the issues on this dating market now is that both of us have too many options first and foremost men and women we have too many options because there's always that oh this is going to be somebody else especially with women they always think it's going to be another man always she if she if she feel like she gets you she she feel like she gets some other guy and she can but what they don't understand is is that when it comes to men men is the easiest thing a woman is going to attract in her entire life it's, it's right. the easiest thing. I mean, all you have to do is be breathing. And sometimes you don't have to be breathing. You know, we're not going to get into those type of guys. But um, that's the easiest thing for them to do. And so they feel like it's always going to be an opportunity to get another guy. Always an opportunity to, say, level up and upgrade, you know. So I meet a guy making $100,000. 
I can meet a man that's making 200 grand. I can meet a man that's making 300 grand. I can meet a man making 400, 500 grand. That's why they've had this standard of, I want a guy with six figures. And you're like, where does that come from? What, where's that come from? That's because they've dealt with guys who make six figures. Now these guys had no interest in anything long-term with them, but since they've been able to, I guess, sleep with him and be with him, they think that that's their new level. You know, mm -hmm. I told you, we, we talk about this all the time. If I meet Rihanna today and I get with Rihanna, I'm like, yo, yo, Sean, I got lucky, man. I, I got with Rihanna, dog. I, I got lucky. I hope to get another Rihanna one day, but I don't think that that's my new level. Right. Women get Idris Elba today and it's Idris Elba's for the rest of her life. That's what she wants. No, it's like my grandma used to say, you know, and, you know, I, you know I've had conversations with women, man. You know, you know, me and, and, and me having conversations with women, man, they take me the wrong way, man. I was more liked. I was I was more liked by women when I lied to them constantly. Yeah. Now that I tell the truth to women, I'm the asshole. Mm -hmm. I'm the prick. I'm the mean guy. The angry black, <laughs> all because I'm telling you the truth now. It's yeah. like I'm like, hold on. I used to lie to you, and now I'm telling the truth. You still got a problem with me. So there's no satisfaction in that department. Secondly, my grandma used to say this, you know, and 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 I'm. And this is a perfect analogy about you saying, oh, a woman get an Idris Elba today. Now every man is supposed to be Idris Elba. Well, women fail to understand. The sun shines on the dog ass every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So they get so misconstrued. And I be telling, and see, my mom broke this down to me when I was a teenager. She said, that, she Let's said, go. What's going on? My mom used to say, Sean, you know what? She said, You know why I call women dumb sometimes? They think just because every guy in the world wants to sleep with you. All of them want to marry you. All of them want to settle down with you. No, dummy. You got a, maybe a couple want to settle down with you. And, the, and, a, and a few or a couple means two want to settle down with you. The rest of them just want to sleep with you. She said, when women pick up on that, she said, but they so dumb. They'll never pick up on that. They think just because some do have sex with you that he wants to settle down with you. Ladies. There's always going to be guys want to have sex with you. They always, always. going to be trying to holler and shoot their shot. Mm -hmm. But ladies, the men that want to be with you, that's your test right there. And mm -hmm. in this day and age, <laughs> good luck. Yeah. But just to let you know, but on the flip side of that, you got women out here trying to play games like dudes. But more of those women that's shooting their shot at those dudes really want to be with those dudes. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. And that's the difference between men and women. Would someone argue that? Would somebody argue that truth? Of course, because there's always that, that chick out there to argue that truth. <laughs> of course. Yeah, she's the exception. And she thinks that because she's <laughs> right. not that way, you know, right. oh, that, that you're, that's false because I'm not that way. Okay, you're an exception to the rule, sweetheart. Right. You know, you're an exception to the rule. Yeah. It, it's... It, it, it's insane because when when you think about like you say how they operate today the re the disconnect between men and women is that men have become feminized and women have are masculine today i mean men men have turned into what they call they say the male b they call them mitches now that's what we done turned into we done turned into mitches you know <laughs> Uh, and and it's and that, that's where the disconnect is. Mitches. And yeah, Mitches. Yeah, I heard that man. They've been they've been. I've heard that term for the last two weeks, man. They've been wearing it out. I say I ain't never heard that one before. That thing sounds hilarious. That's not hilarious, don't it? Mm -hmm. Mitches, you acting like old Mitch right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, what you call me? I said a Mitch. Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can even get mad. I think I'll just be laughing at it. It sounds so funny, man. Yeah, yeah. I feel Mitch right now. He said, Nesco say, I see nurses every day crying about uh, that he just wanted to sleep with you, dude. It's sad. Mm. Crying about dudes that just want to sleep with him. Yeah. It's just that. 
it, it's it's you, all you had to do is call Dr. Sean. Dr. Sean that gave you the, the, the perfect antidote. He used to get you avoid all that. I, I be trying to teach them. I be trying to teach them in videos, man. They don't, yeah. they don't listen. They, they, don't, they, don't, they don't listen to nothing. So I'm like, all right, keep running yeah. that brick wall. Yeah. Oh, oh, I was talking to my buddy George Webb last night and um I was telling him, I said, I said, George, think of the women you know in your life. Think of all the women that you dealt with and think of think of the women that you know. I say, now change their gender to male. Make them men in your mind. Think about it. Majority of them as men would be losers. They would be whatever, whatever what, what men are considered as losers. Make them make them men, and I guarantee you, they're losers. Them op women operating as men, it's only a very few that can succeed operating as men. Only very few. Most of them are going to fail because it's it's not your natural MO. It's, it's not natural for you. You know? Yeah, going to get the bag is masculine. That's the you have going, you're going to have masculine traits. Right, right. And now, Miss Reed, I know that's Miss Reed. What she saying? Oh yeah, she said she said she said the word. She said, nah, they just bees. She said, those are the dudes that are paying these women's bills. <laughs> hey, no, no, no. I'm glad you brought up I brought, I'm glad Lisa brought that up. Now I'm seeing dudes mm -hmm. on I, I kind of get their point, but they saying that oh my god, they saying this a lot. Um a woman who paying her own bills is single. I'm like, okay, yeah, right, right. She should pay her own bills, you know. But this whole right. bill thing, uh, man, they get involved with they they really want men to pay their bills. So I'm supposed yeah. to pay my bills as a single yeah. dude and pay your bills. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. So I'm paying every, all your bills and my bills. Hold on, hold on. I got a third party bills, which call business entrepreneur bills too. So I got three different sets of bills. I got my own personal bills and I got my bills from my business and also I got your bills. Okay. All right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right, Sean. I hey, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm expound on that um right, right after I get these comments. Mm -hmm. like, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's a Nesco say women don't understand that you can have everything a man desire and not be what he wants. Yoo mm. Try it. Yes. That, hey, that's that's the gospel right there, Ness. He said, uh, Jessica, Jessica Matthews say, oh, heck no. She said, these ladies crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we know Jessica. We know. I like Jessica, man. I like Jessica. That's, 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 that's so true. But, you know, um, B, it's, it's so sad that that's, uh, that's where we are right now as a society, man. I mean, I mean, man, I, I mean, I'm really supposed to pay it your bills i that that just really it's something that just i can't it just pretty much baffles my brain man. but mm -hmm. big but it's just like our topic is it about love or is it about money yeah this thing always is going to default to money in some form of fashion it's going to fall always back to the dollar man every single time man. and and now that's why i'm about to go in on that so one of the reasons is defaulting to money. And I learned this, especially dealing with the women in my community. Um, things, you know, growing up, I didn't realize then, but I know now. Whenever they shame us, say things about us, call us dusty, call us broke. You know, they, they call us, you know, um, uh, gay or anything like that. A lot of it is projection. A lot of it is projection. So they call us broke. But then I found out as an adult, I'm like, OK, you found out most women are broke. And that, I'm not that's not to say most women don't make money because there's plenty of women make money. But most of them are broke, even with them making money. They could be making 100K a year and they'll be broke. Absolutely broke. And so take like, say, women who are about an age 40 right now, say about 40 right now. Right. And she's been working for the last 20 years solid or, or about 18 years. She got out of college and she went straight to the workforce and she's been working her tail off. She worked for the last 18 or 20 years. Ask her right now. Do you think do you want to do this for another 25 years working at the pace you're working at? And overwhelming majority, Sean, they're going to say no because they don't want to do it. That having to work 
knowing you got to get up and do it day after day after day after day. That's a masculine thing. It's, women are not built that way. Now, you got some that do it, have done it, will are doing it now, and will continue to do it. But that's not many. Those women are exceptions to the rule. Like they say, um, only nine percent of women make over seventy five grand, uh, seventy five grand a year. Over nine percent. And um, back in the day, I used to watch Tommy Sotomayor all the time, and <laughs> you know he used to do. He used to go in, but he said he talked about. He said for all their blustering and bloviating about education, he said the net worth of black women was five dollars. It's five dollars. Mm. Wow. And that's because, oh, that's because, yeah, you got some women at the top. You got some black women that's that's killing the game. They making money. They entrepreneurs. They business owners. They CEOs. They all of these things. But then you got the ones at the bottom who don't want to do it. It's not that they're not capable. It's right. not that they can't go get a job. They right. don't want to. They want you to fund it. They want you to pay for it. They want traditional men while operating as a modern woman. And men have gave them collective hell no. Right. Right. I agree with you 100 percent, man. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you you when you when you uh, pretty much talk about <clears throat> the masculine, the masculinity of women dead on point. The thing about women, too, a lot of them are living above their means. Yeah. If and, and, and women they expose themselves. They what? I'm like, I'm listening to them. Like, okay, she going here today. She going there today. She going out to eat here today. She went and bought some shoes today. She bought a couple of other dresses. I'm like, I see why you broke. Yeah. It first of all, they don't know how to. They're mismanaging their money. Mm -hmm. And that is the number one cause of why a lot of these women are broke. Kids are grown. Yeah. I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. How is it that I got two kids that's not grown? And I, I ain't broke. I don't I understand that. I thought that would be, I, should I be struggling a little bit more than yeah. you with no little kids you got to really take care of? And it's just you and how you broke? Man, when I was single, I mean, there's like no kids? <laughs> what? I think I, when I didn't have no kids, I don't have a check in the bank from the previous week that I forgot it was even in there. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to say it's just it's just you. You are li they are literally living above their means based off what they do every single week. Yeah, mm -hmm. and part of it part of it too is they're impulse buyers, you know, and the government, corporations, companies understand all of that right. that they're impulse buyers and think about it think about it, sean everything is marketed to them except for cigarettes cigars and beer i think those are the only things that's not marketed to them in mass everything else yeah yeah it's yeah it's pretty much marketed to them you know you know a girl she she bought a laptop for eleven hundred dollars and because it was pink she couldn't give me the specs on it she couldn't give me um, how much RAM it had, how much memory. She she couldn't give me none of those things, but she got it because it was pink. Right. And right. I was like, I was like, that's absolutely ridiculous. You got women making eighty k a year, and the first of the month when bills do, they sweating. You know, they they they, they sweating because they're worried. They're worried because they live above their means. Like I told my mom and my sister the stat, and they couldn't believe it. Say women make eighteen trillion dollars worldwide, but they spend twenty eight trillion dollars. Where you get that number from? Hmm, that's uh, it, it, you can look it up. I, I googled it, and uh, you can Google it. I forgot. Um, let me see. Hold on. Hold on. Let, 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 let's. Let, 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 I'm gonna tell you exactly where that's from, dude. It say eighteen trillion worldwide is what they make, and they spend twenty eight. So that means they're spending their money and they're spending your money. Money. Yeah. Our money. Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah. You know, yeah, man. I don't understand how everything you see you want. I don't understand that. 
I see a lot of things. I'm like, all right. <laughs> but everything you see, you want, you get. Wow. Mm-hmm. It makes so much sense. Just straight buying off impulse, man. And yeah. I, yeah, I'm Forbes. I'm trying to know what the average woman closet looks like. So that if, if you could see that, that says Forbes. They say want a piece uh-huh. of the 18 trillion dollar female economy. 18 trillion dollars. Wow. wow. Un freaking believable. Yeah. I believe it. I believe 100%, man. Based on so, what I see in here, oh, my God, man. Oh my God. So it's always going to come back to money. I'm like, when is the last time I bought me something? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm buying things for anybody else, but when is the last time I did something for Sean? So it's like, you know. Yeah. I, Let's see. Crazy, man. Nesco says reality TV is destroying their brains. They rather buy eyelashes than life insurance or health insurance. Come in the hospital looking like Cardi B and living like Aunt Jemima. Oh, Nesco. Stop <laughs> <laughs> ah, fire. Stop fire. <laughs> oh. Wow. Oh man. Wow, man. Priorities are all pretty oh. much mixed up, man. And then you want to bring a oh. dude into that equation. You know, <gasps> he going to darn near be mismanaging funds. But the thing about it is, women, when you have a leader, he's going to, a, re, a real leader is going to be like, no, we ain't, what you need that for? I mean, mm-hmm. what are you lacking that you really need? You don't need nothing. Tons of clothes, tons of shoes. You got two cars out there. You got jewelry. You got everything you can think of. You got a nice house. You got everything you can think of. So you just want, you don't need it, you know? Truly, it's not going to yeah. even be like, no, nah, we we're not doing that, you know? If that's if you want all these different type of things, all these extra type of things, what you need to do, pretty much, yeah, probably get you a part-time job. Yeah. You, 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 you have to. Yeah. yeah. You have to. It's, it, it's, it's insane, man. It's insane. But like like Nesco said, reality TV, social media, um, you, you name it, from the art, from music artists to um, um, actor actresses or whatever movies, all of that, it's it's in it's changed the culture. So what like like I, I said it before, women want men to be what society has told them we're supposed to be or how we should be not how we actually are like this one thing i i fig- i figured out sean and you can attest to this right everybody hates chris julius um his dad julius you got a beeping in the background What's the beep? yeah, hold on hold on hold on i got you i got him hold on what that's gonna say yeah bro Bring dude into all that nonsense. Give him the boots and the bills. Ah, Ness. Oh, Ness. You say, uh, right package, uh, wear a dress. Okay. So Nesco said, yeah, bring dude into all that nonsense and give him the boots and the bills. Yeah, man. That's that jump. Let's see. Yeah, right package. So what I was saying was Julius. Um, he plays Chris's dad. Uh, was just Terry Crews' character. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows, and it's a joke about how cheap he is, right? Right. He's so cheap. He's like, hey, that's 52 cent worth of tape. Hey, you just spilled 72 cent worth of milk. Like, he's he's watching every dime coming in and out of the house. Get upset when they spend too much or, or waste money or something like that. Mm-hmm. I was thinking, I was like, man, Chris's dad was insane with cash. Come to find out, Sean. A lot of men are like just like that. Some even worse. Right. I got a buddy of mine. This guy, he's well off. Son. He's older. He's almost sixty. You know, he, you know, um, half a million dollars in the bank. He's worked thirty years. You know, he, he's made his money. He's just working on his retirement, other retirement checks from other sources. So he got other sources of income. Man, he's bought his money. Right. This dude live off four hundred dollars a month, Sean. Four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars. He paid. He paid what he need to pay. Then four hundred dollars. That I mean, that's it. 
four hundred dollars. It's doable. It's doable. It's, it's doable. doable. I don't. I don't. Me. I don't spend a lot of money, man. So I may not be too far behind that dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, man, because you know, I mean, I, I cook, I cook my food, bring it to work. I just don't like spending unnecessary money, man. If I want to spend money on something, probably some coffee. But it's not a lot of money, man, because you know, I think, you know, mm -hmm. as a businessman, I just had to learn to. I'm glad I becoming a businessman, becoming an entrepreneur, made me manage my money better because there's a certain amount I have to have in the bank. As an entrepreneur, that, that, that thing can't sit at zero. It can't right. take the paycheck either because as a business, your business need money to be there just in case stuff. You know what I'm saying? You just all, you, cause you never know. You never know the type of money you're going to have. I mean, yeah, man. So it just learned, it taught me to break those bad habits of extra spending that I used to I used to do so I don't do that no more man but as a businessman you right gotta, you, can't, you can't have an like, entrepreneur can never have a mindset of a nine to five person right sure all most right so oh this this most entrepreneurs don't never think of like a nine to five person yeah this is a historic moment I'm doing the share screen I feel I figured out how to do it so worldwide females earn 18 trillion but spend 28 trillion dollars wow you say, and this is yeah, economics job on um, market rumors. And so, okay, this is the thread. I wanted the article. Okay, I, I gotta find the I gotta find the thread. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna find the thread. Right, right. But um, but yeah, it's 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 there, Sean. It's there. Let's see. Lisa says these women need a man to be a leader and reel the men, but they won't submit because they are making their own money and they are comfortable in their masculinity. <laughs> ah, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Now, uh, Kevin Samuels talks about this all the time. There's nothing wrong with you going to get money, you going to chase the bag, and you know you being every woman, you know, as Whitney Houston sings. You know, there's no, we got no issue with that. Go ahead and achieve, baby. Do what you got to do. Go get your education. Go get your money. The problem is, is that if you're not making what would be equivalent to two incomes, you don't have enough for retirement. And so when you don't have enough for retirement, you're going to be relying on the government to take care of you into old age. Women can't work the way men do. Dude, you got guys 60, 70, still working hard jobs. We're not talking about office jobs. We're talking about they out they, they doing construction, they on roofs, they doing plumbing, electricity, they doing dangerous hard jobs in they in well into their 60s, some into their 70s. Mm. Mm. You're not gonna see no 60 year old woman on no roof. Mm. Mm -mm. It's not happening. Mm. It's not happening. You're not gonna see her plumbing. You ain't gonna see her in electricity. You're not gonna see her in carpentry. You're not gonna see her there. But you'll find plenty of older men in those fields, especially blue collar work, because that's what we're natural plow horses. We're built to do that. Women are not. So now, when you're gonna have women relying on the government. Now is what it's going to do. The government can't pay for them. They can't. The government can't pay for them. So what they they already talked about. It. They say, you know what's coming, Sean? Since they say, okay, since y'all don't want to pair up with women no more and the marriage rates falling every year, they're going to start instituting the bachelor tax. So if you're a man that's single, they're going to tax you even more. Wait, wait. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. You, you haven't have heard about the bachelor tax? No. They trying to implement that? Yeah, they say, yeah, they say, they say it's coming, man. Hold on, let me see. Man, see. come on, man. Come on, man. Women ain't getting taxed for nothing. Single women? Right. No? No. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> Imagine freaking that. Wow. Yeah. Still in our pockets. Boy, God damn. Yep. It's still, you see, we're still in the pockets, man. Staying still up. in the pockets to a hey, Lisa to my time to get married. Then, nah, Lisa, no, I'm good. Man, whatever, man. <laughs> kill <laughs> you know what hey, man. go and kill that noise, man. Whatever, 
Hey, uh, Nesco say life is expensive. The person you choose as a mate is not supposed to be more expensive than life or even close. Instead of a mate, you have another bill with a big booty. Mm. Big booty Brenda, but she a hole in your pocket. God, they taxing brothers for not getting married now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey. Oh, here go, here go Nesco, here go Nesco, Sean. You know he he in bliss right now. He talking about not gonna get me. <laughs> man, get off this feed, Nesco, man. Whatever. Man. Yeah, with that <laughs> Nesco. Oh man, I can't believe that, man. Boy, dude's gonna be tripping for that one. Oh dude, yeah, dude's gonna be tripping on that one, man. What in the world, man? I hope that don't happen. Yeah, it says, have you, this is Yahoo, say, have you heard of the bachelor tax? This and other outlandish taxes over the years. Let's see, uh, where are we at? I'm going to go straight into it. Got a plane cost that bachelor tax. So before recent shifts toward a more liberal attitude about marriage in this country, the state of Missouri tried to encourage single men to tie the knot as quickly as possible by taxing them. In 1821, Missouri passed this so-called bachelor tax charging $1 annually to single men between the ages of 21 and 50. Now, that bachelor tax is no longer enforced in Missouri, of course, but they're talking about bringing it back, and they want to institute it nationwide. And it's not just it's not just um, here, Sean. It's going to be, because like China has a, China and Japan have a big issue. They, they got what they call over there, and I told you, ladies, if, if you upset about, you know, how men view women after 30, don't go to Japan or China because it's like 25 over there. After 25, you call Shung Yu, which means leftover woman. <laughs> that's a real thing. They, they don't play over there, man. That's that's pretty much what it is. Oh, what the hell is going on? You're a woman and you you 27 over there. You a spinster and you know, an old maid at 27 over there. I don't know. You know, I, I you know, that, that's a, a part of me don't understand that. You know, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm working on my profanity. You know what I'm saying? From, yeah. So, <laughs> I did a whole video yesterday with not one customer, man. It was like, yeah. <laughs> but that's a historic moment. Yeah, it's historic, man. So I'm sitting, I don't understand how they got these times these ages for women that they old hags over the hill or whatever, man, women are looking better in their forties and fifties and their sixties than these 20 somethings. Mm -hmm. man. Yeah. And they got their stuff together, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, man, get out, man, they need to kill that noise, man. Oh, uh, you know, you, you know, you, you're 30, you're 35, you're 40, you know, you're all out there. So, and but what? Bad as hell, and she bad as hell, I mean, that, to me, and I know the, the, to, for me, I mean, I hear you, Kevin Sam. I mean, bro, you think you know that's your opinion, mm -hmm. but it ain't mine. So for me, she had a 40s and 50s and is bad as hell. She the cream of the crop. Mm -hmm. She the cream of the crop. I mean, bump her age. Would you look at this uh beautiful specimen? But when it comes to just dating, maybe getting in a relationship with, you know, or something like that, Sean. They're not talking about women being left over for that because they're going to always have that. When they right. talk about it, when they talk about it, what they mean is, is that you want to talk about building a family with this person. You want to talk about her I'm having children. Family. Yeah. So uh -huh. after 30, women lose 90 percent of their eggs. 90 percent gone. As soon as they right after 30, 90 percent of the eggs gone. 35, they go into geriatric pregnancy uh, when they're having children. So the one right. thing. But we, we, it's so all this technology, women can still have kids, man. The virtual utilization, yeah. Stuff. If you got the money, because, um, I see how much that the IVFs and all of that it's like five, ten thousand dollars a pop. It's man. I'm, I'm, I know people who've done it, so yeah, it's, it's very, yeah, it's very expensive. And it's, it's guys that like, hey, I can either do that or I can go get this girl from the junior college. I mean, it's just that's what it is. Now, all men are not going to go. Okay, I want a twenty-two year old. No, no, because some of them, they, hey, like you said, they're annoying. You know, I, I can't deal with that. We ain't fellas, got nothing in common. Fellas, you know, none you of that. Fellas, I done done that. I did it once in my life. I went super young, 
he was in the 20s. She was bad, but I was like, oh, yeah, I've had better women before, but, you know, but, but she's still, but the age, oh my God, I was like, what is this girl talking about? She talking about Nickelodeon. I'm talking about what happened on Monday before. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was kind of like, you know, it, so I'm like, I don't mm-hmm. For the first time I did it once in my life and I was like, why do older men, they, that's just, this is what they want. This is what they want. I said, man, I, my, 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 my mental is so vast. I'm like, I can't, the, the, the conversations, I'm like, that they, I mean, but they love that. You see all these older dudes, with these young women, and I'll be, dude, every time I see it, I'm dying laughing. I'm dying laughing mm-hmm. because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have a younger woman, and I'm like, no, oh no, no, you, mm-hmm. no, she could be in her forties, fifties, hell, she could be in her sixties, but that, oh y'all keep that, y'all, y'all, you know, y'all, 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 you know what they call them. What they call the schoolyards, you know, uh, the soapbox or whatever, whatever you want to call it, man. Go, you know, mm-hmm. virtual. I mean, y'all can have them, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and Nesco that. say he to my Sean, stop. <laughs> Nesco, he, he y'all, Nesco, no, you know that's true, Nesco. <laughs> he know it. He know it. He said, uh, Lisa Reed said, no cussing, no cussing. How uncivilized, Mister Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Lisa. Stick to the subject at hand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So the the what one of the ways that you know especially you know because women at a certain point you're gonna they're gonna want protection and provision they're gonna want man with money they're gonna want those things so but they think that I told you what the maiden strategy is they want to have their fun go party be with this dude be with that dude you know hey live your life I got no problem with it but then once they hit you know get on the back end they hit those late twenties get into those early 30s now they want to be marriage minded and want to settle down but around that time I'm I'm around that age now around that time I'm not looking to settle down right. men around my age are not looking to settle down a lot of guys are they, they just starting to figure out their value and, and, and what they mean and when they're starting to get into their niche starting to get into um, starting to make get starting to get into their careers by right. starting to make a little money and this is just the early 30s, the mid-30s and up. It goes up and up and up. They say for men after 40, that's when your Super Bowl starts. That's when it really, really starts. Right. And so like the like women right now, between the ages of 18 and 33, <laughs> make more than men, the, their counterparts, which, which is men. They make more than us. They make way more money than us from 18 to 33 because they get their value like that. Men have to build their value, and it's going to take you time slowly build your value it's going to take you time but at about 38 it's dude the women's value it their income goes down men's trend upward Mm -hmm. and after 40 the um i think it's like 42 you start making the most money you've ever made in your entire life after about 42 as a man yeah yeah Yeah. testosterone goes down wisdom goes up yeah well in my case, no. <laughs> well, well, when I say when I say testosterone, not saying that you you know you're, you're gonna have a I'll gradual decline. Brand, but I know I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> but let's let's not. Oh, let, well, that, when I say testosterone goes down, is meaning right. that mm-hmm. you're not thinking with the small head um, no. as much anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You start making more business financial savvy decisions right you start right. looking at things a lot more logically as a man mm-hmm. so like i the way i viewed marriage just probably about four years ago you know it was kind of like a fairy tale you know it was kind of like okay i'm supposed to be the prince she's supposed to be the princess supposed to get married had these kids house two cars white picket fence you know 2.5 kids a dog and a cat or something that's mm-hmm. what i'm thinking but now as a man thinking about it logically now and i'm like Marriage doesn't seem feasible. Right, right, right. It it doesn't seem like something that I should get into, at least not now, because to be able to take care of a family, I just I I can't I can't do it right now. I don't have the money to take care of a family right now. Mm -hmm. And the women women right now have told you they're told us straight up they ain't looking to build, they're not looking to build with you. Um, This guy named Richard Cooper he said, "Some women don't build; they sit at the finish line." And they pick the winners. Mm, 
That's sad, man. That's so sad, boy. That's so oh, here go Ness. Talking about he, you, you and Ness. See, y'all terrible. See, the right. black dudes in their fifties, y'all terrible. He said, "Not me. I'm all the way up." Come on, I'm all the way up. <laughs> y'all terrible. See, y'all. <laughs> and now, and now go with Ness, man. Put it there, Ness. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, man. That's so funny, yeah. dog. <laughs> <Mom. laughs> yeah, that's funny right there. Man. I, love, yeah, that's I, love it. I mean, and 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 so since they don't want to build, they want a guy who's already a finished product. And the guy who's already a finished product, Sean, hey, you 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 you've gotten you you gotten you achieved in your life, right. and you pretty much you pretty much playing with house money at this point. Same right. with Nesco, same with a lot of older guys. Right. So at this point, you're like, well, man, what can you bring to me? Because when I was broke, when I had nothing, when my right. value was at its lowest, you were saint elsewhere. You weren't here. So why should I choose you when there's a thousand of you that wants this spot? Mm. That's real talk right there, man. That's, that's real yeah. talk. But it's so funny, man, because I'm like, I'm right here at 51, and I'm like, the most money I made in my life, man. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and I was like, God, why wasn't it like this when I was 31 or 25 or 28? I'm like, dang, it wasn't even like that at you'd have lost 32. I was like, God, why wasn't it like that? But now, looking back, I'm glad it's now than it was then because I wouldn't know what to do. I'd have been, oh my God, man, just spinning, just crazy. Just wouldn't, my mind wouldn't, I didn't have that mindset like I got mm -hmm. now. So I'm glad that it happened right now opposed to when I was in my 20s and 30s, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. But it, it is so true in what you're saying, man. It is so true. So true. Yep. It's levels yeah. to it, man. It's levels to it. It's levels. Yeah, it. yes, it is, man. And when you start, when your values start rising as a man, you, your perspective and the way you think and your foresight and what you, it is all different. It is nothing. You looking at other things like what? Am I benefiting? How am I even? Be what is my benefit for even being with you? Right. Because you're in a whole different bracket. And I love when they try to sneak out a little attitude. I'm like, please do. Please do. <laughs> you said, that's it. Because I'm going to bring you back down and I'm going to talk to you so you get yourself straight because this is not going to. Come on now. Come on. I mean, be very yeah. careful. Tread lightly. <laughs> yeah. Please tread lightly because, I mean, you know, when your value when your value rises and from you going after making peanuts, to you, you, you doing, you, you know, big man's blessed you. You know, your perspective is, you know, your, your whole mood and attitude and perspectives. I mean, it changes, man, because you, you see things differently, you know? Yeah. I ain't want to believe it. Brand, but it's true. Yeah. See, and that's what I said. That's a real talk, Brandon, because how can you want finished product and you ain't even assembled? Wow. Mm hmm. So true. But they that's true. Yeah. See, Lisa say a real woman will know how to differentiate themselves from the pack. Time tells all. And that's the only way. Right. Time. Time. Time is it. You got to put in the work. You got to put in the work. Time. Time is the only thing that's going to get you that type of result. You have to put in the time. You can't watch him from afar doing what he's doing. And right when he's about to cross the finish line, hop on the bandwagon like you've been there the whole time. Man. No. Mm -mm. No. I, you got to be seen in public with him when he dusty. Right. Hey, when he ashy, you need to be seen with him when he ashy. Mm -hmm. That's because when I'm classy, baby. Oh man, when I'm classy, I get boo. I'm be bougie when I'm classy, Sean. I'm like, I'm telling you right now, I'm be bougie. Yeah, I'm be bougie. Oh yeah.
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, say, say what? I know you. I know you from where? Elementary school. <laughs> I don't know you, man. <laughs> Go that way. <laughs> Go that way. <laughs> Big pun on him. <laughs> Rest in peace, the big pun, man. Yeah, man. Rest in peace, big pun. Oh man. Yeah, man. But it, it, it's 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 you know, I mean, you just I don't know, man. You just look at things so differently, man. You just be like, no, I don't, I don't need you. No, great. I don't. I really don't see benefit in my future. Right. You know, what are you bringing to? You know, sometimes what, what my head is, I'm like, what you bring into my business so we can really blow up? I'm yeah. thinking that, you know, I'm like, because I was watching the shop and it had, uh, what it had, it had uh, P. Diddy, Rick Rubin, um, a couple more other cats on there, man. And LeBron said something that was just interesting. He said, he he didn't talk they like they were athletes, B. I gotta get this out, B. He didn't talk mm-hmm. like everybody in the room was athletes or actors or musicians. He talked. He said, they are all entrepreneurs in this room. And when he said entrepreneurs, my 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 ears perked up like a, on a German shepherd. I was like, huh? So I was so I, I really leaned into the TV to listen. He said, We're all entrepreneurs in this room. And he said, how we got to become entrepreneurs is our work ethic, is our drive, mm-hmm. is our obsession to be great. To become an entrepreneur, you got to, that's going into greatness because now you own something. Yeah. Your name literally means something because you're a business and you're a brand. You see what I'm saying? Now, yeah. to get to where we are, we had to go through some adversity even when we doubted. And I remember I was talking to my brother and he said, he was telling me, cause I was like, oh, man, I don't, I don't know. He said, look, man, he said, if I had your talent, there would be zero doubt. Mm-hmm. He said, if I had your gift to do what you do, there would be zero doubt. And that's all I need. That's all I need. And in in my first couple of years, yeah, I was scratching my head, but again, I had to think, Sean, God ain't going to put you in this position. Something that you've kind of known about since you was in seventh grade. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You, I got you. And everything six years later, just been, just, just been climbing, climbing, climbing. But what LeBron has said, man, and entrepreneurs, man, it's just, it's a different mindset. Like some yeah. people have it, but they not locked in. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You got to be locked in and you got to be mentally driven. Mm-hmm. You got to be mentally driven to be an entrepreneur. You can't yeah. think like a person that works a normal nine to five because they ain't got that drive that you got. The yeah. things that we do, the getting up early in the morning, the late nights. He just, he, he put all that into entrepreneurship. And that's an athlete, but he don't look at himself as an athlete. He looks at himself as a business. Yeah. And yeah. that right there is freaking amazing. It's powerful. It's power and it's freedom. You ain't got to answer to nobody. Yeah. Nobody. You are the boss. When you pull up, your name is on that that door. That's powerful, man. That is when I heard him say that, I was like, wow. So when it comes to the opposite sex, we looking uh, an entrepreneur is looking at that female like how you benefit me. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know what I'm gonna benefit for you, but how are you benefiting me? Mm-hmm. See, when you get when you got that boss mindset. And when you literally are a boss, you don't look at women like you used to when you work that nine to five. Yeah. And if you if you really think about it, and this this is gonna sound how it sounds, I don't care. But the modern woman today, she's a liability at best when it comes to relationships. 
and uh, or partnerships. When it comes to that, she's a lot. Most of them are liabilities at best because, like you said, what are you bringing to me besides your tail? What are you bringing to me besides that? And most are not bringing anything. And it's not that they can't. It's not, and that, that's the frustrating thing, Sean. It's not that they can't. It's that they won't. They right. refuse to. They feel the entitled to say, no, you're going to take me just as I am. Mm. And I'm like, yeah. This, and the guys are like, now nah. it's like, baby, that, that baby, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. And speaking of um, that drive that you say entrepreneurs have, I was thinking about it the other day. I said, man, I know so many guys around me, older and younger, that has the potential to do great things. But because of their thirst, because of their uh, drive to want to procreate and chase women, they're, they're, they're middling right now. You know, some not doing so well, some doing OK, but all of them could be much further along than where they are if they if that was not the focus. They say some of our greatest innovations in human history have came because of, for, of men who took that energy and that drive we get to want to procreate. They've taken that energy and they've channeled it into other things. And they say greatness has come out of those situations when men do that. Right. Right. Absolutely correct, man. And 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 one thing um, LeBron was talking about as entrepreneurs, he's like, man, we give up so much and we sacrifice so much to be yes. an entrepreneur. We give up our time. We give up sleep. We give up time with our children, our families. The sacrifice we make just to be an entrepreneur and i and when i've had young people come to me it's like you know i want to i want to have my own business what's your advice i said you got to be mentally driven and i said you're going to give up a lot to get it yeah you're going to sacrifice you're going to sacrifice a lot um it's it's about being mentally driven it's pretty much being about, it's pretty much, you, you, you're you borderline obsessed. You got to become yeah. obsessed with becoming an entrepreneur. And man, it's just, a, it's, a, it's a part of it, man. You give up so much, man. And, you know, you give up and you lose some, you know, to become that. But that's what it takes. And not a lot of people. It's just like it, it's it, what you said about people that you know. It's just like LeBron said, man. There's a lot of guys that's got the same talent as we are, but they're yeah. just not locked in. They're not locked. They're not mentally locked in. You got to be mentally locked in to become an entrepreneur and to sustain it. You know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, man. It takes a different mindset, brother. Yes, it does. See, I got a few comments here. Let me get those before I see I can share this video real quick. Let's say, um, we say, and the game gets even worse when you get married because then to women you become a championship trophy because they figure you have a wife, so you have it all together, and they really want to take her place. Facts. Facts. That's a hey, that right there. That's that that right there. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's and that's the thing that um, women have to understand. You want the made man. The man made is wanted. Okay. Right. You didn't discover gold, baby. You ain't the only woman who discovered this man. Right. Other women know who this man is right. and he is wanted. So right. you got to compete for your spot and they don't want to compete. They don't want to compete, man. Say these men are dating women's looks while women are dating wallets. Oh, that's PJ Tucker and Brittany Renner. Uh, Charlotte, Charlotte Hornets basketball player. He got with Brittany Renner, the girl who done played, who done built all these athletes. Right. Colin Kaepernick made her play for her own flight. You know, she's basically talked about how athletes are dumb. If you want to baby sleep with athlete, she got one. But this kid, he was 18 when she met him, and she was like 26 or so. Mm -hmm. So they pretty much people saying that it's foul because she groomed him. But I'm like, hey, he made a grown man decision. He's 22 years old. There's no there, hey, there's no violin playing for him. Right. But the, I, feel, uh, I do still, I do still feel sorry for the brother, man. No, I do, I do because it's, it's, it's he don't. 
it, got, just, he, I got, I got, he got asked. He got played. He got played. You know, so. he got played, and I got asked, who does he have in his corner? Where are the men that say, "Hey, it's not a good idea"? Did he ever have that? Does he have it now? Right. He might not, because he's a million dollar athlete. He probably got a bunch of yes people around him. Probably. Yeah. And he might not have guys in his ear saying, and then he probably didn't want to listen. Right. Probably. probably, It's a possibility he probably didn't want to listen. So he said, that's real talk, Sean. Being a driven entrepreneur calls for a sacrifice in some area of your life. Yeah, bro. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to wrap it up, man. Got to get to work. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. So um yeah, let's 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 wrap let's wrap this thing up. Man, I I, I done found out how to do the share screen now, man. I'm, I'm about to play with this thing. It's uh, on and popping now, baby. About to show yeah. me how to do that. Now I got now I'm about to show I gotta show you. So yeah, yeah, like, so, yeah, show me. yeah. so 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 find closing thoughts, closing thoughts, love versus money. <sighs> um and we'll, this is just my take on it. Um being where I'm at right now, mm-hmm. if love isn't the foundation of your relationship or partnership, at the end of the day, it's not going to, it's not going to flourish. It's not going to excel. Excel. I mean, mm-hmm. pretty much dead in the water. Um, we we got to get back to not being with people for what they can do for us, but love to get back to the love first we got to find love again um i don't know how you want something real or authentic when you have an ulterior motive and hidden agenda behind it that's my final thought right um 100 100 man um i will say this to the men especially the young guys because i know some young guys that do watch me and to the young guys man I know women is are when you desire women and that's natural. Don't ever feel bad about that. That's natural. You're supposed to desire women and want to procreate and be with them and be around. That's what you um that, that you're you're driven to do that. But regardless of looks, money, status, resources, nothing can guarantee you good outcomes with women. Not even those things. There's not a dollar amount. There's not a handsome enough face. There's not a built enough body. There's not enough people you got following you or people know you as far as the status. There's not enough resources and things and assets that you have that's going to guarantee you great outcomes with women. All those things do is give you bites at the apple. That's it. It gives you more chances. But as we found out today that um, some of these apples are rotten. And it only takes one bad apple to what spoil the bunch, bunch. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to be careful out here man you got to be careful because men operate on love men don't operate on money we operate on love because when you see a woman there's net there's never been a time in history you me nesco any man didn't find a woman attractive and then she you find out she makes 100 grand a year and now all of a sudden you're interested and she's attracted to you it's never happened but on the flip side, woman not interested in the guy. He's not tall enough. He's not cute enough. He's not whatever enough. But she found out he worth five million dollars. The interest is there all of a sudden. That's the difference. And so when you have men operating off love, you get the outcomes that you get with, say, a PJ Washington. You know, because she's not operating off love. Not that, especially the young ones today. They're not operating off love. Mm-mm. Mm-mm, mm-mm. No, mm-mm. they say men love idealistically, women love opportunistically. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, because you say, "Oh, that's my love. I love him to death." Just so happened he's six eight, six pack abs, bold and bald shoulders, and make a million dollars a year. Mm, I would be in love too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's funny, boy. That's funny. But yeah. So, man, this stuff, this stuff. Yeah, real talk, real talk, man. Nesco says money cannot hold together where the glue of love never existed. Oh, yeah. And that, that's where we're going. Transactional relationships. Love will always be the foundations of a lasting partnership. Yeah. 
But hey, I'm telling y'all, it's a cold world now. If yeah. most relationships going forward are going to be transactional, yeah, it's it's pretty much what it's going to be. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, yeah, man. Hey, y'all. Hey, if you in the, if you in love, you talking about love? You last of the Mohicans, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate y'all, man. Like, share, subscribe. Hey, hopefully we'll be back next Saturday. We'll, yeah. we'll figure out a day of time. So we'll hopefully we'll be back. back. Yeah, follow Sean on all his social medias. Um, IG, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. Follow me. Hey, we will be back, man. I got some got great topics coming up. Got some more shows coming up. But we'll talk to y'all later, man. Right. Peace See. out.